<clears throat> hello, hello, hello. I'm just going to start because I forgot to put an at everyone in the announcement to this stream, which means that probably a bunch of people won't know it's happening. But you never know. Maybe I'll get randos. Maybe they'll follow me. We can always dream. We can always hope for a better future. So I'm just going to dive right in and assume that everything is working fine. Also, I'm going to remember to put my phone on Do Not Disturb so that we don't get zip zip. Although, now that I have my microphone on a nice big uh, bracket armature, that's less of a problem than it used to be. How many hours are we up to now? 143. Nice. So, my main goal here is to pick up where I left off. You might notice that we are not where we left off. That's because... Um, well, I didn't want to fill up any of the, any of the, uh, I didn't want to waste any of the space we're about to explore, well, not down here, but when we actually get back to what we're doing, by uh, doing it personally. I was going to have it all be on stream, but I did want to play earlier, so I went back around and just absolutely schooled a whole bunch of uh, bosses. Every single boss that I could remember where it was and that I had had trouble beating, I went back and gave them a solid kick in the pants each, absolutely destroying them with my insanely vast... Oh no, juice everywhere? Why are you like this? Anyway, so I, uh, I went back and I fought every boss that I had previously had trouble fighting and I beat them all first try because turns out leveling does actually make a difference to this game. I say, getting my ass handed to me. Drinking the wrong potion. Anyway, I've got to have about 15 pest slaves now. Um, these things suck and I hate them very much. Fortunately, I don't. Well, actually, no. I was going to say I don't ever have to fight them ever again, but there's going to be a bunch of them in the area we're going to explore today because it's the origin of the Rot of Melania. Which is... Oh, fuck. <laughs> don't get distracted while poisoned, darlings. It will result in your instantaneous death. Anyway, I could teleport straight back to where I was going to explore, but I'm literally right next to the final mini-boss whose location I can remember that I have not yet beaten. So I thought I would come back and kill it just to see what we get. Probably a golden seed, which is pointless because um, my extremely excessive exploration tendencies mean that I have actually capped out the amount I can upgrade my uh, the things I upgrade with golden seeds, even though I have a ton of them in my backpack. Actually, how many do I have? Um, key, uh, oh, boss room here, six. So I have six golden seeds. Um, and I've already maximized the amount that I can upgrade my flask with them. Yeah, one of the weird aspects of adding a, uh, a what do you call it? One of the weird aspects of adding a jump button to the Dark Souls formula is that you kind of get, um... Like, by necessity, they've had to expand the ability for you to, like, jump and move by jumping and so on. Which means that you do kind of have these situations now. Anyway, that's my special No More Poison spell, which I will no longer be using. I'm probably going to get killed by the pests behind me while I try and fight this guy. I'm just going to get rot infected again, aren't I? We're all trapped in infinite, indefinite circles of our own making. Such is the curse of existence in this hellish human world. I should be pretty easy to beat provided I kill the pests first, but instead of fucking about, I'm g <laughs> get wrecked. At least I survived more than hit more hits than the pest did. Anyway, in case you're wondering, this is the Lake of Rot, which is a hideous giant underground lake of the rot itself, the kind of like physical manifestation of the concept of entropy and decay. Which, um, last stream I was wondering about why 
the uh, like what's the connection between the rot and Melania and so on you know how did it arise how did it come into existence it has since occurred to me that possibly Melania might just be the, the god of decay after all anyone who's been on Tumblr for more than uh, you know about five minutes knows that decay is an extant form of life Motherfucker got behind me. If I die, I'm just gonna... <laughs> okay, well, I've lost 70,000 souls. That's fine. That's only about half of a level up at this point. So, I'm gonna ollie outy. The fungus on the walls does kind of look like barnacles, but I think that's supposed to be, like, cup fungus. Anyway, so... Uh, I'm not gonna waste too much time fucking about here, because we're gonna go here, to the origin of the rot, where it started from. Why there is a lake of rot in that specific position, I don't know. How it got there is a mystery. One might imagine that it is, in fact, the rot draining out of, you know, some kind of deity or, or god or whatever. But if we if we look, it's over here, underneath the lake of Laonia. And just to the northeast, there's a lot, whole lot of pure water in uh, Noxtella, the Eternal City. So... You know, if, it, if there was going to be a, a rot lake anyway, you'd think it would be down here underneath Kaled, which is the area of the world most heavily infected with rot, where there are, in fact, rot puddles on the surface. Anyway, this is Elphil, the brace of the Halig tree, and it is the uh, final or possibly penultimate mega dungeon that I'll be exploring in the game. And, uh, yeah, we've done the first section of it, which is a really lovely sort of gothic architecture ringed city type dealio on the outside. And now we are descending into the ruptured innards, like some kind of maniacal proctologist. As you can see, pretty nice vibes. Not too keen on the gentle pastel coloration, but, you know, it's not a terrible place to be, apart from all of the incredibly foul divine poison soaking into that lake full of stuff, I guess? Anyway, so there's going to be a bunch more pests here, because what the pests are is mostly mysterious, but they are organisms which arose out of the Lake of Rot itself. The map does have... Wait, did he did I? Oh, there we go. Wow, 31,000 souls for killing that? Are you kidding me? That doesn't seem right. That's way too much. It only takes me 120,000 to level up. I could kill him and run back and just grind up a bunch of levels in like 20 minutes. That's surprising. Uh, but yeah, so the map starts, not it doesn't just start covered in fog of war. There's a really nice touch to the exploration of this game. One of the few things that I really appreciated about it and one of the few interesting additions to the open world formula and a good way to blend it with the Dark Souls format is that at the start of the game, this is the extent of your map. It's completely zoomed in. When you start when you start the game, it's you can see this. And only this section is like the the literally the the parameters, the resolution of the map. You can't scroll any further or zoom out any further. Um, and then as you find maps, it uncovers it. And as you enter into a new zone, that zone is added to the map and the map expands to accommodate it. Which is really clever because it actually gives a sense of mystery to the scale of the world. Um, one of the difficulties that you have in... What a pretty butterfly. Unfortunately, it is not harvestable like most of the butterflies in the game. Since this since this has sort of a, one of the open world uh, crafting systems that I don't really like, where everything you see is, is resources to be harvested for your own nefarious uses, uh, that's... You know, it's a shame that I can't use that to make into pies or whatever the fuck. But it is also not a shame that it's just it just gets to be pretty. Oh, aha, interesting. That guy's eyes are glowing, which means that he is gonna drop a bunch of bonus souls when I kill him. I wonder if it's as much. 31,000. Okay, interesting. So I guess both of these were golden-eyed ones. Now, with a bit of luck, actually, I should... What the fuck? Hang on, no, I was in the middle of saying something. Uh, yeah, so the map expands to accommodate the new territory every time you enter a new zone. So when I reached the Altus Plateau, this got added to the map, but in a Fog of War format, and then somewhere there you find a map, and then when you find the map, it reveals it in the luscious colour it has. But also, yeah, the map expanded from this big to this big, 
to this big, uh, and then incorporated Kalid. So, you know, when I had only explored that much, the map literally was a rectangle this size and shape that I'm just describing now. Um, and yeah, and it's really lovely, a really lovely thing to add to the formula because it means that, you know, you never, you're never sure what the edges of the game world are. You're never sure how big the world is going to turn out to be. Which should be a nice touch for obvious reasons. One of the things I've often been disappointed by. Oh, I see how it is. God damn it, Miyazaki sama, why are you like this? Also, I feel guilt. I feel weird actually saying that. It was just supposed to be a joke, but now I feel like a weirdo. Um, anyway. Miyazaki does love to put poison swamps in games, and he does also love to have at least one poison swamp that makes you walk more slowly, which sucks. I don't like it. Um, so even with my poison resistances boosted massively, and the ability to cast a... Sp Are those pests? Oh, they're going to pop up and fight me, aren't they? Oh, I don't like that. Oh, I guess they're little ones. Is this where they come from? Are these baby pests? Anyway, um, one of the things that often disappoints me in an open world game is that at the start of the game you can see not the whole map itself, obviously you need to uncover areas of it, but you can see the extent of the map. Um, now, if I was really smart, I would have switched to a weapon that had the Ashes of War that lets you do like really fast sidesteps and then just side hop my whole way through this entire disgusting puddle. Unfortunately, I am a fool. And I have the techniques of a fool. Oh no, that's a full-grown pest. If I've ever seen one. One upside to the fact that I uh, accidentally locked myself into the, you know, kind of like Dark Lord style ending. Ow, fuck off actually go fuck yourself. I no longer wish to be in the puddle. I suppose that's one way of leaving. Now, actually I might be able to set myself up to do that if I'm quick and clever. Anyway, so what was I saying? Uh... Yeah, a lot of a lot of open world games, you open it up and all the, ma the map is, is greyed out and you explore it to fill it up but you don't get to see you don't, you don't get a limitation on your understanding of the size of the world so you know the idea that the map sort of unfolds and expands ahead of you means you're never quite certain about the edges of the map and how much left there is to explore that's just a really nice touch for a, a game that is fundamentally about exploration um the the feeling that you've never quite explored to the the edges Anyway, I always need to restate everything I think three times, so I'm going to move on now. <laughs> this is a very real problem and it irritates everyone I know personally. It's, uh, it's, just, it's just satisfying to, to do that to these guys. Oh, interesting. So these guys are worth about 6,000 normally, and the golden-eyed ones were worth 30,000. So that is a pretty big increase. I'm going to make this one come to me. Another fun fact about Elden Ring that I can't remember if I've mentioned is that uh, when... Hmm, can I? Oh, I can target them. I'm going to try and kill as many of these as I can from out here. Well, that ain't going to do it. Where's my amazing logbow that I love very much? Here we go, the pulley bow. Nope, that's still ain't it. So the thing about looking yourself into the uh, Lord of Lord of Frenzied Flame ending is that, um, well. Normally you get to choose between various different endings at the end of the game, depending on which ones you've unlocked, which are based on which different NPC stories you've completed. Um, if you if you unlock the Lord of Flame ending, you're completely locked unless you do a, comp a, a very long NPC's quest chain, which I am nearly finished with, which will allow me to pick which one I want, which will be nice. 
Um, but being the Lord of Friendly Frenzied Flame gives you the only talisman in the game that doesn't require any faith to use, which is what I have here. Frenzied Flame Seal. So that combined with another fact, which is that uh, a, a, an incantation, a faith spell that I have, which um, requires intelligence rather than faith as its casting attribute, happens to cure all horrible things. Here we go. Heals all ailments, dispels all special effects. So Law of Regression is a very useful thing for me to have. So the fact that I've got that, it's just a com lucky coincidence that I can use the Frenzied Flame Seal to... Um, how do I make it show me the other... Um, hmm. Well, whatever. Anyway. Means I can uh, clear the rot status without having to faff around. Ideally, I wouldn't have trouble with rot to begin with because I would be able to simply make use of the crafting system to create preserving boluses. But as you can see, I only have the capacity to create three right now because I ran completely out of crystal cave moss. And sacramental buds are... Um, really rare, which is the game's terms for uh, there being only a finite number in the game world and you have to find them. You can't uh, get away with farming them like a lot of other useful items. Can I hop up on here? Get out of the loop. There we go. See if I can find some more baby pests to shoot. There's a few of them going around. Where was the big one? Where's the adult? Uh, yeah, anyway, so I was thinking a little bit about um, the way that, uh, like, what the rot is, because I was kind of confused about, you know, why did this horrible goo start to flow out of uh, one of the deities? Well, all of the various deities embody different aspects of uh, the universe. Oh shit, that's the full-sized one. He's going to kill me now. Unless I switch to spells, which would probably help me kill him. Can I headshot these guys? Well, not if they do that. He's going to start casting his cum spell again, which I don't like. Fun fact, if you roll when you're in a nasty substance, it coats you, uh, and then even if you um, use the the build-up producer that, that cures the status ailment, uh, it keeps building up regardless because it's all over your clothes, which is a really nice touch for verisimilitude, but a rather frustrating touch for not dying of rot. Maybe I can just ignore that guy. Maybe I can just reach the other side without dealing with him. Let's... Actually, do I have an item that has the quick step option? I'm pretty sure I do. Somewhere. A dagger. What's that got? Quick step, quick step, quick step, quick step. They've all got quick step. Except for this one that has blade of gold, apparently. And this one that has blade of death. And Reduvia Bloodblade, and Glintstone Dart, and Repeating Thrust. The rest of them are quick step, though. Let's see. Yeah, if you spam that, you can zoom through pretty safely, if I remember correctly, because when you're in the animation, you aren't getting uh, afflicted with additional kill you points. Anyway, so I was rambling about the nature of the rot because, you know, uh, there are various different curses in the world. There are sort of horrible symptoms of the slow and decaying collapse of reality, which are afflicting all sorts of different people with all sorts of things. The omen are an example of this, you know, these, these strange curse that causes children to be born bud budding horns until their bodies are eventually just collapsed. Um under the weight of a of hundred horns sprouting from their heads and shoulders and bodies. And uh, similarly, 
the uh it's really hard for me to think today huh similarly the misbegotten are afflicted with this sort of strange animalistic degeneration where they slowly become more and more like various different chimerical beasts covered with various horriblenesses so and there's also some kind of a weird curse of blood and so on and so then you find out about the rot and it's like this horrible disease that sort of a magical curse-like disease that makes you makes everything terrible forever so i thought well if that's the case oh look okay so it doesn't stop you from getting afflicted with it but it does let you move faster that's the important thing right now right So, you know, um, if that's the case, then it stands to reason that it's down to, you know, the fundamental nature of this deity rather than being down to uh, another one of these curses. And that's what tripped me up for a long time. I suspected that this was yet another one of these sort of, like, obsession-born curses allowing the world to slowly sink deeper into nastiness and decay. But no, um, it's probably a natural part of the world, the same way that, you know... The god of death embodies death, and the god of order embodies order, and so on. It stands to reason that, um, you know, rot is a necessary part of existence. and um, But it's also one of the nastier parts of existence, and much like with destined to death itself, part of the corruption of the golden order involves the sort of excising or manipulating of parts that are considered unwholesome or undesired. So if that's the case, it's not that unlikely that um, the denial of this aspect of reality, this necessary aspect of reality, causes uh, a kind of a backup or a clog or some kind of like spiritual malaise, which is what seems to be happening with all the various ones. House ahead? Uh... So I guess really it's both of those things. That's right, we'll never escape the influence of Bofa. So, yeah, so I think that, like, hmm, either the rot is just a natural aspect of the fact that there is a deity of, of decay and rot and slow death, or it is the result of an attempt to deny that aspect of reality and remove it. These guys look, why do they... What is the deal? Anyway, so this is this. These are the forms of life that have come to exist from the rot itself. They are said to have crawled up out of the the great swamp in uh, the middle of of uh, Kaled and started causing various problems. And they're sort of one of the many, many malign, mysterious alien influences on the nature of this world, much like the outer gods or uh, the falling stars or. Uh, a whole bunch of different guys who have all sorts of questionable plans for the world. So let's see. I can get over to that lake, or or I can go down there. That that looks like it leads to an outside section. So if I go this way, this is probably a hidden area, quote hidden unquote. So let's have a look over here first, and I'll probably have to fight something big and horrible. Be wary of strong foe. Yep, sounds like it. Looks like there's a good item down there. Where's my strong foe then? I don't see a strong foe. If I drop from here... Well, there he is! <laughs> I'm just gonna die of the rot, I think, you know. Solve that problem for everyone. It's been a while since I fought one of these without having access to my uh, my mimic, which could make life a bit more difficult depending on how tough this one is. The rot ones are always harder to fight than the others, and it's been a while since I fought one. But it does look like I can maybe blast him with spells with a bit of luck. Plus, I've got the item now, so I should have an easier time causing problems for it. Where the hell's my magic staff? Oh, I unequipped it! <laughs> no spells for me! 
We take this fight like men, I guess. Well, a vaguely gender non-conforming fantasy woman with, a, with short hair and big muscles and giant root monster that is some kind of representation of the sort of, like, loss of the capacity to remain healthy in a fundamentally uncaring universe. It does seem to be stuck in a loop. If I come up here, it seems to it seems to keep falling back down again. I take it back. I'm starting to think there's no point in equipping the Scarlet Rot Resistance Talisman, because it doesn't really seem to make much of a difference. You know, if there was any justice in the world, this motherfucker would dive right off the edge and... This is what's generally considered to be called comic irony. But yeah, rot resistance does not seem to decrease the damage that rot does, only the uh, rate at which it accumulates. And um, considering... Hmm, how would I build to beat this thing? How much damage can I output with my spells? Spells are probably going to be the way to go. Let's see, back to my good stuff. Although I would quite like to try upgrading the Carrion Regal Scepter since it's got the highest uh, intelligence requirement in the entire game and I am very, very smart. But yeah, um, it's very easy to get Scarlet Rot and it's very unpleasant and frustrating to deal with. I could actually, I tell you what, I could double, I could double up on magic damage boosting talismans. That might be a good idea. Then it's time to get blasting, I guess. Exchange our hat for a different hat. And maybe put some trousers on. Let's see, that'll give us a bit more. Well, that's one point equating to an extra like four mana. That's not, <laughs> nobody cares about that. That's not gonna do anything. You know what might do something? My question mark hat, which I love dearly, even though I hate to wear it because it's, it's dumb. It's a dumb looking hat. You know, that's why people come to my channel for the insightful criticism. Right, um, god, what have I got? Okay, so, talisman boosters, 24, what's, uh, what's 30% of 90? It's 30, isn't it? So I can go up to 30 kilos, pounds, units of equipment load, so I could go for something. Oh no, hang on, 28.4, okay. What the fuck is the, what is the borderline? I thought it was 30%, but it's clearly not. Maybe it's 25%. Don't know what 25 25 percent would be half would be 45 so then it would be 20 points oh fucking hell i don't care i'm just gonna go die also i'm sure many of my viewers will be pleased to note that i have still maintained the barefoot paradigm for the vast majority of this game i have occasionally while off stream put trousers or boots on but um yep for the most part it's bear souls a go-go baby even here, where I really, really, really ought to be wearing shoes so as to avoid catching something horrible, foot, you know, hookworms, say. Uh, which apparently, in the real world, the, the major like transmission vector of hookworm is people walking through places barefoot that they really shouldn't be walking through barefoot. No more shall you skitter. Anyway, apparently there is not a Scarlet, Scarlet Rot-based ending to this game, which is genuinely surprising to me. I um, I was expecting there to be a sort of a, allow the world to, to decay away and rot and for a different future to bloom out of it, since that's what, that's what the theme of the rot seemed to be getting towards with me. You know, it's this, it's this foulness, but then also from it, new life can emerge because the pests themselves are new life that has emerged from it. But nope. That's, uh, not the case. Now if I go around the other side, will it trigger to make the thing attack me? Because if I'm going to fight it, I'm going to fight it. Yeah, try range battle. What do you think I'm trying to do? Why is it always death and then still no lover? Angel ahead and then injustice. 
think they're referring to an NPC who might show up here later. Come on, guy. Come fight me. Where's the trigger? What actually triggers that thing to spawn in? Oh, there he is. Right, time to get out of the rot hole. This fight would be easy if it would just let me use my stupid bullshit magic guy that makes my everything better. It is going to be necessary for me to kill this for that quest line to progress because I looked it up because I'm terrible and I like to do terrible things. But perhaps I will come back to it. Perhaps I will explore the pretty outside place a little bit more first instead so that I don't have to get frustrated bashing my head against a large wooden brute. Right, where's my ugly hat? There it is. Let's swap that one back to Stamina Boost. And we should be good. Stamina, bamana, slamana, mamana, mamana. That's nonsense. Is that an NPC? That looks like something. Aha! Uh -huh. That looks like one of the traders. <clears throat> who somehow get everywhere, even to, like, forbidden holy realms. There's just these guys around. <clears throat> they remind me a lot of the merchant from uh, Resident Evil 4. Although they don't have quite his same uh, roguish charm. Anyway, fun fact. They are subtly and in some way connected to the spread of one of those various different horrible curses that I'm talking about, which is that of madness. Um, madness being connected ultimately to the ending that I have locked myself into. The, frenzy, the Lord of Frenzied Flame ending. So... Try jumping, but seek circling around. So I guess grab that and then you can come back, I guess is what that's trying to tell me. I can probably get... Hmm, that route looks like it's how we get back down here. So what if we come up this way? Scrambling around on rooftops is like 30% of the fun bits of Dark Souls games. So it's nice to see that that's definitely preserved in the large dungeons of uh, Elden Wing. A hole, a hole in a, a hole, a hole in a roof. Now I can probably jump onto one of those rafters, but I do not think I can. I can land it consistently. What did this guy do? Ah, oh, looks like he failed. Looks like he beefed it royally. What happens if we do that? <laughs> well, at least I ruined that guy's day. You know, if you have to spend your life somehow. That would be the way to do it. Oh, hang on. I must not forget that I need to come back and fight that thing. I'm just going to put a marker here. I was expecting this to be more of an architectural dungeon, a bit more like the other ones. So it's... On the one hand, it's nice that it's a different kind of a design. There's much more sort of organic sc scribbling, scrabbling through weird dank holes underground, um, which is something we all experience at certain times in our lives. And, you know, so on. But I just, I, do, I don't like the vibes of Scarlet Rot places. They're just unpleasant. I hated Kaled. I hated every second I was there. Um... An entire zone created almost entirely just to make me feel... Oh, that was close. Furious. Even the fact that just literally the the soundtrack to that entire zone is just rising fifths eternally forever. Um, presumably just to attempt to wig out literally anybody who's there ever, forever. It's just a dick move, really, on the part of the developers. The developers? <laughs> Oh, I'm more tired than I thought I was. Uh-oh. 
It's another one of these spunk warriors. They do so love to shoot their jizz at me. Oh, there's two of them. Lovely. I think I actually have that spell now. I've never used it because it's gross. I think I have it. I much prefer the nice, clean glintstone sorceries. You know, that's just merely... Okay. I, I don't think it feels like it's a sorcery when these guys do it. I, I guess it's a spell when I do it, but this just feels like something these guys' bodies can do. Perhaps all of us could do it if we just tried hard enough. Maybe that's what sorcery is. You just think real hard about magic spells and then they happen. I suppose it's not impossible that I'm just too fatigued to stream today. I don't know. Maybe I'll cut this one early. I felt fine earlier, but I can feel my I can feel the fatigue sinking into my brain. It's like uh, I don't know. I don't know what you would call it because I'm too tired. Anyway, maybe I can get a slightly better angle on the big one since he's the one who was the real threat by coming up here. Oh shit. Aha, so that's how you do it. Looks like I'm smarter than that one guy. All right, I'm going to speak to someone who is not one of my viewers right now, as far as I know, and say, hey, uh, could you shut the blinds in here? I can't see my PC screen anymore. Thank you kindly. Your service is, as always, very heavily appreciated. I'll make sure to ask you the next time I need blinds put down. Sooner or later, I'll slaughter all of these bitches and then they'll be sorry. <clears throat> and other phrases that will get you investigated by the FBI. I suppose I will... I'll, I, I, I will spare you. You know... Reaches into backpack. Hey, don't come to stream. No, actually, <laughs> that's. I probably shouldn't make jokes about school shootings because that's incredibly dark. Um, so well, at least I caught myself before I finished saying it, and that's what counts. Yeah, like exactly. It's a, uh, it's a uh, something. As someone who lives in a country that doesn't have school shootings, I, uh, you know, that's not a trauma I should really ever make jokes about. Um, I can understand. I can understand people who are having shooter drills making jokes like that. But hey, it's just that I'm tired and my filters aren't switched on, and other excuses that I could continue to make but probably shouldn't, instead of just owning my mistakes. Much like how I'm about to own this incredibly irritating prawn. This should fuck them both up real good, I think. I love that spell so much. It's very effective. Ooh. That looks fun. Do I have enough magic? Yes, I do. Everyone loves Glintstone Shard. Let's see, so I can't get back up to go in through the roof entry again. I might have to cycle all the way around, but I'll have to go down before I can go back up, it looks like. Which means I should probably get the drop on this guy.
They're probably delicious if you just, uh, you know, cook them up, boil them with a bunch of herbs and spices, crack open the shells, feast on the, on the nutritious meats within. <sighs> In fact, I think I thought they were called prawns at first, not pests. One of the weird things I've noticed about being fatigued is that I get really dehydrated really quickly, even if I'm drinking a lot of water. I can feel the sleepiness creeping in and, and looping a weird sort of pain around my forehead. But that's not relevant to exploring Elden Ring. So these are graves, almost certainly, which makes us wonder who's interred here and why. This is uh, the Halig Tree, which is a magic tree that was created by one of the deities who was the deity, I, th I think, from whom the rot sprang originally, or possibly... No, wait, hang on. Michaela and Melania, and I cannot remember which one is which. One of them the rot sprang from, and the other was a child fraternity. And uh, the one who was a, an eternal child turned the, turned some space into a giant tree to hide inside uh, to wait while he very, very, very slowly grows up on the grounds that when he's grown up, he'll be powerful enough to remove the rot from the world and also from his sister, from whom the rot flows initially. Which implies that it's not necessarily an inherent, an inherent thing that the rot comes from Melania. Um, it's not an aspect of Melania's divinity but is in fact yet another one of these horrible existential curses that the world is afflicted with. But, uh... If that's the case... Uh, then all of that stuff that I was saying earlier then kind of retroactively back around applies, question-wise. Concerning. That guy definitely was not supposed to survive. How much damage can I output, I wonder, if I hit one of these with a full... Actually, no, I'll just blast him with this. I think three of these will do it. Yep, three of these, three of these would have done it. That's a waste. Hmm. Let's see, is there anything up here first? I think it's just a gallery with nothing in it. Much like an abandoned deviant art page. I haven't had to fight a ton of these since uh well, since Kaled, right near the beginning of the game. I was hoping I would never have to fight them again, but oh well. Maybe I should just go to sleep. I wonder if I'm I wonder if I'm so heavily a gamer that I could just game in my sleep. That would be nice. I have had dreams where I'm playing games. Usually if I play a particular game obsessively for a really long time, I start dreaming about playing it. Um I used to have really fucked up Dark Souls dreams actually. But I've also had... Ooh, that's the prettiest thing we've seen down here in a while. Hmm, looks like a boss door up ahead. I want to go back and explore some more before I fight the boss. That's usually the way I do these sorts of things. Lover? So lonely? Oh, interesting. Traveler's clothes abandoned here, which implies that an NPC of some kind died here. Let's have a look. 
worn by one young woman who set off into the world to confront their fate. I hope that that's not... Oh shit, this is a flower. Hmm, the NPC whose quest line I have been pursuing in order to undo my terrible fate. Uh, some people talked about hoping that she would one day bloom into a flower, so I hope I haven't accidentally ended her quest line early by coming down here instead of fighting that root monster. Because I know that I have to fight the root monster f uh, before I can progress her quest a bit further. Huh, what was that? For a split second as we went up here, I got the option to summon something. Aha! This is the other end of that shortcut. I knew that there would be a connector here somewhere. Now, is there a, a step off halfway? Oh, there is! I think. Aha! Maybe? Or are those blocked up? They look blocked up. Hmm. Okay, fair enough. So that's the shortcut. I suppose, actually, I could go back and check if that NPC is still at the last place I saw her. And then I'll know whether or not she's uh, been turned into a giant flower. Or has naturally turned into a giant flower. Been turned kind of implies uh, some kind of malevolent activity by another party. Yeah, because there's this whole outdoors section out here that I could explore before I go fight whatever boss that is. And that's... Usually, what I do with my obsessiveness... Is this, is this dead or not? That's dead. Looks like there's about ten more prawns out here, though, so I'll have to be careful. I do really regret making that joke earlier, but it's also kind of direct feedback that my view account dropped immediately to one and hasn't changed. <laughs> I think about the thread spell is that it's not difficult to dodge, but it is quite difficult to deal with if there's a bunch of them casting it on you. So I'm probably going to be a bit quieter for a bit because, uh, well, on a fatigue day, I don't have the focus to fight stuff good and also talk at the same time. So while I try not to die to 10 million prawns, I will be uh, probably forgetting to talk from time to time, from sentence to sentence. Shame I cannot summon my good good buddy, aka me. really remind me of a specific animal and it's not actually a prawn. I wish I could remember what it's called. There's a there's a bunch of like horrible house dwelling uh insecty things. A lot like uh silverfish and assorted other nasty bugs and things. That's what these remind me of. Centipedes and nastinesses. I have woken up too many. With a bit of luck I can catch that one out if he moves around well. The other one I think didn't see enough of me and he's going to reset to his previous position because of the weird ways the stealth mechanics work. Oh, well that guy's no longer a problem. <laughs> and other phrases immediately proven false. No, pill bugs are alright. Uh, isopods aren't, aren't terrible. These things just are awful, though. Like, weird hair-like protuberances and 
many little grasping leggies and arms. still alive and then there's at least one more who's still alive and I'm all out of the ability to not be killed oh god there's so many of them now with a bit of luck I think I can creep up on one of these last two ones I mean, it's not quite creeping up, but it'll do. Unless he kills me, in which case I'll have to do all of this again. Now, I am actually <laughs> going to go to the point of sitting here for a second and waiting for my HP to regen, thanks to the marvellous magic of the warming stone. Which will take a moment, and then... Then? And then that guy is fucked. Interestingly, there is exactly one neutral pest that I've met in the game so far, and he uh, supposedly is uh, is a pest, even though he's you meet him in human form and he's like uh, shape shifted. So as to talk to you, aha. Well, I'm sure that bell bearing will come in handy. I've got about eight bell bearings to go give to the the merchant who takes them. Okay, so that was definitely worth clearing out down here to see all the to grab all this stuff. Oh, is there a secret up here actually that I missed? That's also another question to ask and answer. And the answer is no. So then there's the other side. This area was actually visible from where we first started. I found the other end of that lift a lot earlier than, uh, well, anything else that we did in this entire zone. And it goes all the way up to the top of there. So I did wonder if this area down here would be traversal, traversable or if it was just for, for visuals. Oh, hey, my blood stain. Nice, that gives me enough to level up, assuming that I don't fuck up fighting this guy again. Generally, jump attacks seem to be the trick to fighting knights. This is true in real life as well. Oh my god, he's got a healing potion! That's not allowed! I'm the only one who's allowed to do that, are you kidding me? I've never seen- I've never seen NPCs that aren't tarnished use potions before. That's literally the first time I've ever seen a... Uh... An, an NPC that isn't equivalent to what the players are. Uh, be able to do that. Interesting. This area has mini boss vibes. I wouldn't be surprised if I get attacked by something when I'm in the open down there. Don't mind me. Just passing through. Oh shit, there's more guys. Oh fuck! <laughs> Hi! How many of you are there? <laughs> I'd like to leave now. Not quite how I meant to, but... Uh... It's very important to backstab guys in passing. Stops them from being a problem in the future. This is um, generally considered to be the appropriate behaviour for a graveyard. Um, I know it might not seem logical, but if you ever happen to visit a graveyard in real life, make sure that you slaughter all of the mourners standing in front of gravestones. Uh, like I said, it might seem counterintuitive, but trust me, the guy who runs the graveyard will thank you for scaring up all of this new business. It's probably the most efficient way that they ever actually see uh, new 
New graves filled. How, 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 many, how many of these guys are there here? Fucking hell. Oh, it's those guys. <laughs> they can cast spells. It's kind of interesting, actually. They they clearly use sorceries, but they are... Oh, I'm out of FP. Fuck. They clearly use sorceries, but they're um, knights who should generally be using faith-based, uh, what do you call it, incantations rather than sorceries. So it's surprising that they do actually use both. They don't have glintstone or presumably any sorcery training. Ah, dip. That's it for me. Well, I had a good run. Excuse me. So if I go back up, I should be able to go get my my corpse. All of my delicious uh, corpse juices that I need. Then I think I'll go try beat that root cluster again, and if I beat that, then I can advance the NPC quest line. And if I can't, so be it. Sneaky sneaky gets it done. Most important uh, aspect of being stealthy is to always kick candle holders to make a huge noise if you can help it. It's just good practice. Fortunately, these guys can't shoot through walls very well, but they can shoot around corners a little bit, which is frankly unfair since I can't. Oh, shit. It's just occurred to me, I, I did actually find somewhere else that um, baby pests appeared. There was a... Uh, at the very centre of the swamp where, where you first encounter pests, there is a um, secret... Secret's probably the best word for it. Secret, uh, dank, nasty, gross hole in the ground. Full of graves and tons and tons of, like, weird scarlet rot... You know protuberances which I th and I think half hatched eggs which kind of implies that's where they were coming from originally so I guess they kind of emerge naturally from anywhere where there's enough scarlet rot built up which again implies that it's like another another form of life and another natural life cycle and another thing which potentially has perfectly as much right to exist in the world as you do um, which may be an unpopular opinion with the people who have to die of the f horrible fucking disease but so be it. I think those are normal knights, so they'll be a bit easier. Uh, men at arms, rather. So they'll be easier to deal with. I wish I still had my other AoE spell, but I do not. That's okay though, I know how to deal with knights. You jump, and you slash, and you jump, and you slash, and eventually they fall over. It's not really a slash if it's a heavy overhanded hack, is it? Much like me! Da 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 da. I'm saying I'm a heavy handed hack, that's the, that's the joke. <sighs> anyway, so I'm sure that there were some more guys around here. There's probably a bunch of them that I won't notice who will suddenly surprise me with a sudden attack. Um... Oh, that's an oh, that's uh, that's one of the big archer guys. Those ones are a huge pain. Probably he's actually there as a lure, and me coming to fight this guy will actually result in someone else killing me, which has happened more times than I care to mention as I've been fighting my way through this entire game world. There are a lot of times where a very conspicuously placed enemy is nice and convenient for you to murder, and in the process of murdering that enemy, you then get shot with a howitzer.
these they blend in remarkably well for a graveyard full of red leaves. Uh, these giant men wearing bright yellow doublets. Or tabards, rather. You know, you wouldn't think they'd be quite as obvious as they are, and yet. None of that, you. <laughs> wow, the timing on that worked out perfectly. I think jump attacks might be slightly overpowered. <laughs> generally speaking. So I think there's only two left hiding down there. Okay, but there's a drop down there, so I should probably go get them first. Oh, actually, no, there's some around this gallery shelf as well. Aha! That is another one of the full-sized, double extra good, powerful knight guys. So if I fuck him up with spells, my life will be a little bit easier. God, they've got a lot of hit points. Hit points out the arse, these guys. Alright, time for a dynamic entry instead. And that is how you deal with a knight when you are, in fact, a wizard. Everyone loves being a wizard. It's because you are incredibly effective at everything. You can fight with a sword. You can take heavy blows. You know, you can tank. You can wear all sorts of heavy armor. Cast all the best spells. Cast all the best incantations. Choosing to be a wizard is basically the same as not choosing a class at all. That's not true. I'm just lying to you now. Is there nothing else down here? I really thought there would be some more items. I feel like I'm missing something. Maybe there's a boss that only appears at specific times of day. Which is a curious mechanic that has resulted in me missing like five bosses at least that I just don't know. Don't know exist. Uh, except for the fact that someone mentioned them once and I have no idea where they are. Hmm. Really does feel like I'm missing something. Oh, this must be the shaft that we can trouble up from the other position. In the in the elevator on the inside, I think. Or it could just be yet another one of these buttress supports. That's also a possibility. Okay, so that's everything except the root clump now I think that I've successfully murderized and explored and looted so I will go back and try and fight the root clump and with a bit of luck uh well oh wait this isn't the way to go hmm oh shit I wonder if there was something upstairs on the thingy that I should have grabbed actually hmm. I'm gonna do some teleporting around now rather than walk which is another weird thing that's kind of happened considering the, the, the Dark Souls shortcuts paradigm. All of these areas are still designed according to that, but you can also teleport from literally any position at any time for free, unless you're in combat. So it kind of matters less uh, finding the shortcuts. Right, so if I go back up to the prayer room with Millicent...
She is still here. Good. There is something I must return to Melania for the will, for the dignity. Which means I can jump to the drainage channel instead. Now, first I'm going to step back outside again because I'm I think I might have missed something up on these rooftops and root tops, if you will. And then I'll go back in and fight the root beast. Hmm, okay, so that's that buttress, that's those buttresses. That buttress doesn't have anything on it. This buttress doesn't have anything on it. The down lower area we've already explored. Basically just leaves this upper roof area, but I think there was something accessible from the other side of the roof that I missed. Or maybe I did grab it and I've just forgotten that I grabbed it and I remember not grabbing it. Hmm. Let's see, that's another buttress. That's that roof top. See, this this super looks like there's something up there, but I'm not sure I can reach it. And I will probably fall to my death if I try. Let's see what this guy did. Yeah, so he tried to do exactly what I'm thinking about doing. Shit! Which wasn't meant to be that! Oh well. C'est la vie. This is the downside to having sprint and dodge be the same button. If you're moving, you just start sprinting. So if you attempt, if you have a very short run up and you try to uh, hit sprint and run at roughly the same time so that you can go to a full sprinting feed over your short speed over your short run up, um, you do a back step and die. Alright, that's 80,000 back in the bank. I can probably land on that buttress, but I don't think landing on that buttress will get me anywhere interesting, is the thing. <gasps> Aha! I am a genius! Oh, this is a whole, whole thing. This is a whole other thing. Haha! <laughs> the fuck is up here? It's still nothing. Hmm, can I see anything from up here that I couldn't otherwise see? Definitely can't reach that lower ring. We could reach the upper ring from the upper ring buttresses, but I guess there's nothing in the architectural rulebook that says all of your buttresses have to follow the same logics. Okay. That looks like a drop down back to where we came into the area. The door is over there, I think. So that would let us get back to how we got in here. I think it's just around the other side, that protuberance. Yeah, that's definitely that. So, what's the point of this then? What's this for? There must be something up here, otherwise there wouldn't be an up here. Could be on this buttress. Or it could be over there on that buttress, maybe. No! Ah, beans. Uh, there might be something on the roof of here, but it doesn't look like it. Oh shit, fuck. Aha, I'm fine, it's okay, I'm fine. Everything's everything's cool, it's all good. I'm beginning to think that carefully taking these things out one by one may, may have been unnecessary.
dodge rolling three times. The the sheer the sure sign of someone who's not actually got their dodge timing down dodge timings down yet. It's been 140 hours. How have you not got your dodge timings down yet? Well, let's not think about that. Right. How did I get? So that drops you down here. Is there no is there no way to get back up? I think the only way to get back up might be to go all the way around and back up again. Hmm, that sucks because I'm sure there was something up there. I'll have to teleport back up again. <laughs> anyway, this is what it's like for me when I'm playing this game by myself. Like, just constantly looping back around through the same bit again because I'm sure there's a secret I missed. I'll probably get up there and find out that there's nothing. I've always felt like I should put down a note that says nothing ahead, no secret area ahead or whatever, but I'm always a bit reluctant to do that because what if there is one and I just missed it? I wouldn't want to mislead other people into not finding it. For that same reason, I have never ever trusted a single time I've ever found a message that says dead end ahead or no item ahead or whatever. Because, you know, what if they were wrong? What if there is one? Got a 100% this game on my first attempt. Why? Reasons. Oh, is that a ladder? <gasps> it is! Oh, hang on. A terrible suspicion has just accosted me. Does, if that ladder goes all the way down to the ground, which it looks like it does, then that's the way back up without having to teleport. Ugh, oh, I'm a fool. Uh, if I... I really need to get uh, one of those, like, uh, hotkey pads so that I can have sound effects and stuff, and so that whenever this sort of thing happens, I can flash up that one panel from Homestuck that's like... You begin to suspect that everything you were just doing may have been a colossal waste of time. So I guess there was a secret up there. Uh, but the secret was that there was just an alternative way back up, <laughs> which that was a part of. I may be a fool. Anyway, let's just make use of all these runes and level up one last time before we go fight the thing that's probably going to kill the shit out of me a whole bunch of times. Uh, nope, that ain't it. Hmm. Now, what's the best way of fighting those things? Generally speaking, dodging their attacks and, um hitting them with jump attacks until I can get, until I can land a uh, uh, a riposte strike on them has been the way to go. But dodging a whole bunch when you are in a poison swamp is a bit less of a viable option. Oh hey, that must have been a glowing eyed one. Dropped 20,000. This would be so easy if I could just summon my minions. <sighs> oh well. Right, what items have I got that will help? That will help. And I could make some cured meat. That would definitely help as well. Oh wait, that's the wrong one. Which is the one that's poison resistance? Uh, immunity. I don't know if these things have any meaningful weaknesses, uh, except hit them very hard repeatedly. Which means it's going to be down to my equipment. I could leave my sorcery stuff available. Boosting my stamina might be necessary. Hmm. But if I'm not going to use sorceries, I shouldn't have the sorcery charm. I think I'll try with jump attacks. And just see if I can get good enough at dodging. I 
I wonder if uh, I wonder if people who use uh, faith-based magic have an easier time with this stuff. Hmm. Come up here and say that. Maybe sorcery is the way to go. Generally speaking, the way to beat these things is to dodge preferentially and uh, just stay in really close. Most of their attacks automatically whiff if you're close enough to them. But it's also just really difficult to be that close to them when they're in an enclosed area. That's going to kill me. Oof. He's a tough boy. What I really need is something that will give me resistance to the damage that Scarlet Rock does, which I don't think the Scarlet Rock Talisman did, but maybe. Maybe it's worth a try. Um, let's switch this one. For the Rot Resistance Talisman. Oh wait, that's Robustness, not Immunity. That's the wrong one. That, exp <laughs> that explains why I wasn't having any reduction in my Scarlet Rot intake. Because I was using the wrong fucking Talisman every single time. Probably sucks for this guy whose entire existence is to just be the only impediment between me sprinting straight towards the boss. Imagine going to the Lord of Creation and being like, and what is my role, Master? Uh you you exist to be backstabbed before every attempt to fight this boss. Uh oh, okay. Oof, that's rough. What's he doing? Is it stuck? Hmm. I guess sorcery might be the way. <laughs> Try ranged battle. Oh, that's going to explode. When you knock them down to half health, or roughly half health, they do a big explosion and it's kind of a pain. Oh shit. That open mouth slide is a grab attack, which will inflict you with whatever their element is, which will probably kill you. Alright, sorcery. This time, sorcery. Maybe I should try... Where's my good sorcery? Where's the... Where's the one that might be worth trying? Oh hey, Olivia, it's build up of sleep and madness. I could fucking use that. In my real life. Um, there's definitely something here that might be useful. Where the hell is it gone? Ice. Ah, here we go. Night Maiden's Mist. Oh, it looks like that's a uh, very close ranged. Not. So there was a spell called Pestilent Mer Mercury in pre in uh, Souls games. And uh, it was very useful for beating certain very large bosses because it was an AoE that would just hit multiple 
times a whole bunch. So you could blast them with it and then they would just sit in it and slowly die. Um, I haven't tried Pestilent Mercury before, or the, I mean, this game's version of it, which is Night Maiden's Mist. It might be worth doing, though. Night Maiden's Mist sounds like a medieval term for what we have, like, like, modern medical knowledge about now. Like, Doctor, I'm constantly getting pain in my abdomen. Hmm, sounds like Night Maiden's Mist. Let me smell your urine. That, uh, I mean, it's probably not just that the Doctor is into that, but, like, that was a, a legitimate diagnostic criterion back then, before we had lab analyses. Anyway, it does damage for the same reason that this Shard Spiral does a lot of damage. Namely, it, uh, it just hits multiple times. Anyway, that open mouth leap attack is relatively easy to dodge, but is a very dangerous grab attack that will cause huge problems if it hits me. That missed. Haha, <laughs> it missed, get it? it? Looks like we're getting decent damage out of a single cast of it, though. This might be the way to go. Quiet times for try hard mode. Oh god, please don't come fight me up here. Ah, did it get me? No, we're alright. That's the other difficulty. Yep, FromSoft really decided to make life incredibly hard with this one. They'll give you a boss that it's necessary to do a shit ton of very long range dodging to avoid, uh, and then we'll put it in a very enclosed space so that you can't read its animations, and then the next time you fight it, it's in an enclosed space so you can't read its animations, and it's also on a cliff so that as you dodge, you will fall the fuck off the cliff. Etc, etc, etc. Okay, let's skip on the jump attack booster and go back to sorcery damage booster. Do I want to skip immunity as well? Probably. If it's, if it's going to give me rot, it's going to give me rot, and that's not actually going to make much of a difference. Oh yeah, and then of course, in addition to making you fight something that you have to dodge constantly, uh, on a cliff, in an enclosed space so that you can't read their animations, then they also make you do it in a lake of poison. You know? It's kind of what is widely considered in the uh, game design community to be a dick move. Oh, I haven't seen that animation before. I fought like five of these things and I haven't seen them do that. <laughs> He has decided 
He is disinclined to remain in the in the damage zone. If I can damage it enough with the mist, then I can switch to fighting it with the sword relatively successfully. I mean, if it decides to just get stuck here, which would not be the first time it successfully beat a boss because it decided to get stuck in a particular position. Um, oh, no, he's decided to move on. Say la vie. Explosion time. Cool, cool, cool. Cool place to do it. There we go. Okay. Where's his eye? There it is. Range on that thing. I'm just going to blast him now. This should finish him off. There we go. And that's how you do it when you're an incredibly powerful wizard. And it dropped a golden seed, which I can't use because I've already maxed that out for the amount that you can upgrade it in the entire game. Ah, oh, yeah. Where did it even come from? Did it come out of the stone wall? That seems unfair. <gasps> ah, okay, that's the next step of the quest. I need to be summoned to assist Millicent, although I should probably rest at the bonfire first and come back. And of course, by bonfire, I mean Sight of Grace. And that's not how you do that. How the fuck? I'm glad I still have my one cheerleader on the sidelines. Right, if I'm going to go fight... Yeah, sorcery will probably be quite effective. Okay, well, he's no longer a problem. <laughs> I don't think there's any way for him to get back up here. Not without pathing all the way down that branch, which will probably result in him falling to his death. One thing I have noticed about um, Elden Ring, as opposed to the Souls games, is that Elden Ring enemy pathing is a lot less uh, fun. So I can be summoned to fight Millicent, or I can be summoned to help Millicent. I'm going to help Millicent. Um, on the grounds that I like her and she's nice. 
Although her, for lack of a better term, dad does sort of tell you to murder her. But uh, you know, we're not a we're not a dad supporting channel. We're generally generally opposed to the murder of young women by incredibly horrible eldritch prawn men who crawl out of the swamp. I don't know if I get multiple tries at this. Um, I think there have been some NPCs I've been summoned to help that I did not get multiple tries to assist. Don't just wiggle your... Useless. Did I... Wait, did I rest at the bonfire? I think I forgot. Oh, sounds like I failed. This seems difficult. Like, escort quests are already hard enough. Oh, it looks like I can try again, so that's alright. Sounds like I need to get up close and personal, though. Although, I wonder if Millicent will be hurt by Night Maiden's Mist. I could just blast that into the zone and see what happens. Or I could get repeatedly slaughtered by these incredibly fast-moving entities. That's also an option. Let's see, what have I got that might help? Well, I've got my sorcery talismans equipped. What spell would be good? Yeah, let's just try Night Maiden's Mist and see what happens. I think I might have too many spells. Excuse me. They've all got such adorably ordinary names. Maureen. <laughs> Maureen, Pollyanna. Oh, fucking hell, she's gonna die again. God damn it! I can't really think of alternate tactics that will be more beneficial. I can either try and kill things with my sword, or I can try and kill things with magic. That's really- that's my whole deal. One of those two things. She does fine fighting against one. As soon as she fights two, she gets blended. Hey, this seems pretty tough. And I can't summon my buddy to help.
Is this what it's like for people when they fight me? With the constant dodging and the... Like, rapid attack tactics? Am I the asshole here? Oh, a failed backstab, lovely. How is she that low on health already? How- straight up, how are you supposed to do this? Hmm. Well, they dodge all my spells because they're furiously dodges. I guess I could switch to the bigger AoE spell, but then that's not, that does no damage. Like, Like, if I could just kill one or two of them, it would make killing the rest a lot easier. She died, like, instantaneously. Oh, uh, well, go have fun playing Overwatch, I guess. I will continue this stream for the sake of putting it on YouTube, I suppose.
Oof, that was rough. Oh, hey, Lyra. Nice to see you. Have you been around? Ugh, I have finally killed all these things, which means that that character's quest should finally advance to its conclusion. Which means I can finally free myself from accidentally having locked myself into an ending I didn't want to lock myself into. The only ending that locks you in. Anyway, I've cleared out most of the Halig tree now, as far as I can tell. I've, um, oh wait, that's the wrong, I want to go to the prayer room. Uh, yeah, I've cleared out, like, everything up to a boss door, and I haven't fought the boss inside of said boss door yet. Alright, well you haven't missed much, it's mostly just been me running around not successfully being very entertaining <laughs> while I explore the Halig tree. Or Elphile Brace of the Halig, tr Halig Tree, which I assume means it's there to hold it up. That was a little bit of insight into the nature of this setting and this world earlier on, but I also constantly forgot what I was talking about because I'm very fatigued today. Um, and at one point I made an unfortunate joke, which I regret, and which everyone immediately abandoned the stream in the wake of, which is understandable. But time to kill this guy for like the 17th time. With a bit of luck. Her stuff should be there now and I can grab it. The really funny thing about this is that I killed this guy effortlessly 15 times on my last 15 attempts to beat that uh, battle over here. And then the minute someone else has shown up to watch, I've started just beefing it royally. Hmm. Ah, there she is. I think. Oh, thank you for lending your hand. Without your help, I could not have defeated that quartet. I feel as if I've been in your debt from beginning to end. Thank you. With your help, I was able to live as my own person. If only in passing. Tragic. But this is where things end. I paused to even tell you, but I took out the needle myself. Tell whoever put you up to this that if I am to flower into something other than myself, I would rather rot into nothingness as I am. Uh, in case you're wondering what that means, um, her quest opens with her having forgotten who she is and being infected with the rot, the horrible malign sickness that this is literally a lake of. Um, you do a quest to find a golden needle and bring it to her and you bring it to her and she plugs it in and that prevents her from becoming rotted any further and she regains her knowledge of who she is and you give her a cool prosthetic and she helps you with some fights and you help her with some fights. And um, yeah... But the person who gives you the needle is up to something, and apparently she's going to bloom into something. Please. Let me pass a loop. The scarlet rot rides now. Worse than ever. Soon, I won't be more than a mound of flesh. Curse laden. Untouchable. I wouldn't want such a thing to bring you harm. Please. The scarlet soon. Curse laden. I wouldn't want... I wonder if we reload the area, that means we'll find something else here instead of her. But, um, yeah, the pests, which are the entities which live in the horrible, gross ponds of, of rot and which emerge from it, uh, seem to be up to something and they want her to bloom as part of whatever their nefarious plan is, as opposed to everybody else's nefarious plans, because if this game, uh, has anything going for it. It is a preponderance of nefarious plans. Anyway, so she doesn't want to bloom and uh, a little bit further in we did find a giant flower with a uh, maiden's travelling clothes around it which I assume is from one of her sisters blooming perhaps? And it was her sisters who invaded her and tried to kill her. I assume they were trying to take away the needle or whatever so that she would uh, she would bloom. 
Or, no, th hang on. No, with the needle she th she could bloom because she's continuing to grow while rotting. Sadness. Why is it always death and then still no lover? Um, there's a lot of messages in this game that have weirdly incel vibes. There's a lot of people. There's a lot of people looking looking for maidens and being disappointed when the said maidens' questline ends with some kind of horrible tragedy. Angel ahead and then injustice. I agree with a little bit more. Let's have a look at that golden alloyed needle, or unalloyed as it may have been. I've got a lot of weird stuff. Big old collection of just manky bullshit that I've been stuffing into my pockets since minute one. An intricately crafted needle of unalloyed gold, removed by Millicent from her flesh, bears no trace of befouled blood, but is faintly moist with dew. There is something I must return to Melania, the dignity, the sense of self that allowed her to resist the call of the scarlet rot. So presumably, this will let us in some way, I guess, cleanse Melania? Uh... Since her whole deal is that she was the greatest swordsman ever, but she's the one who spread the rot into the world. Radan tried to stop her and he got all rotty as well. I think Halig Tree Roots is where we need to go now. So, yes, I don't know what happens with Melania if you haven't done this questline, but if you have done this questline, presumably something interesting will occur. Anyway, so... That's the lift that took us here, and here is the giant flower, which I suspect is what um, Millicent's sisters bloomed into. Or at least one of them did, considering there was a, a body with, with feminine clothing. And a lot of Ionian butterflies, which are connected to the rot in some way. Anyway, I have now explored every inch of this place as far as I can. I think pretty much 100%. Uh, aside from that boss door, so it's time to go get my ass handed to me. Hooray! I am gonna pop a few of these so that I can use up my uh, current collection of runes rather than risk losing it in the fight. I think I need slightly more to level up. It's a fun game for me to try and nail the kind of like uh, blackjack you know, desperate attempt to, to hit exactly the right number without going over, so so as not to waste any any of these. That should put me about as close as it's possible to get to my level up cost. Nice, 5,000. That's almost nothing. That's about as close as it's possible to get. Right, uh, time to go fight something, I guess. Time for destruction butthole. Suffering ahead. Dung ahead, bird. Boss ahead and short be wary of healing. Uh, hmm, okay, so I guess we have a, a bird ahead, a bird, a bird shaped boss, which is very tough and hard to beat considering time for destruction, butthole. <laughs> um, so. And be wary of healing, I assume, means that either this boss can heal or that it recovers health in a secondary phase, perhaps? Right, um. What are good items to pop before we go in? I've already maxed that. The rest of these won't be particularly useful. I think I'm just going to try and summon my guy as soon as possible. Oh, this looks boss-like. I actually thought there was going to be more of this dungeon. I'm surprised it's as small as it is. Uh, it only took me so long to explore because I was doing it on stream. It's a lot, it feels a lot smaller than Stormvale or uh, several of the others, or li um, the capital. Oh, she's already been disarmed. She's probably not going to be that tough of a boss. dreamt for so long. My 
flesh was dull gold, and my blood rotted. Corpse after corpse left in my wake. As I awaited his return. Heed my words. I am Melania, Blade of Mikola. And I have never known defeat. This is the boss that a lot of people have been saying is one of the toughest in the- Go oh, fuck! Okay, point made. So this is the boss that a lot of people have been saying is one of the toughest in the game. Um, hmm. And, uh, yeah. The player character just standing there and letting her uh, plug in her arm very much has the energy of a shonen protagonist waiting while the uh, waiting while the villain powers up. Oh, I see. It's one of these ones with the ridiculously long wind-ups and the huge amounts of damage. I assume this is going to be a multi-phase boss because otherwise I'm probably massively over-leveled for this. Is she ever gonna stagger? Or did she? Oh, there we go. Ha ha! Okay, so that's uh, an insta-kill grab. That's going to be something to watch out for. I'm probably going to be quiet the entire time fighting since I have to focus. I wonder if buffing my sword will be preserved if I when I go through the fog. A lot of some a lot of passive buffs aren't uh, aren't interrupted by it, but. Some things are wiped when you pass through the, f the fog. Oh, it looks like it persisted, so that's good. Beginning to see why people struggle with this one. It looks like she might heal with every hit she lands as well. Okay, time to take this slightly more seriously. Let's get rid of my sorcery talismans. I'm not going to bother with sorcery. I'm probably going to do a lot of jump attacks. So let's go for the jump attack talisman. And then I could go for extra stamina or I could go for. Physical damage negation, which might be a good idea. How much is that? That's quite a significant benefit. Yeah, from 8 to 26, that might be a good idea. I'm not going to boost my stats because my stats are crazy already anyway. Uh, HP regen might be good. Hmm. I don't think I need any of these weird technical ones. 
yeah, I think I'm just going to skip out on using cast spells at all. In which case I should probably put some pants on, get a tiny bit more damage resistance going. Or maybe I can... Actually, can I wear armour? That's a good question. I cannot. What am I wearing? That's, oh shit, it's my, my stupid hat. That's what's so heavy. It's not that heavy. A bit of extra hit points. Very, very slight boost to hit points. Uh, is that enough? That's enough that that's light load. But is it light load if I put some actual armour on? It just about is. That might actually be a good idea. Okay, that's probably the best I can hope for right now. I'm sure that anyone watching this on YouTube has been keeping track of the amount of the game I spend barefoot will be massively disappointed, but um, such is life, I'm afraid. If I pop that, I should remove that. Then ready to go. does that have? Good lord. That's going to be a good one to keep out of the way of, I think. Looks like she can be staggered out of her big combos, though, so that's good to know. This feels like bullying, and then I just absolutely get obliterated by a one-shot attack. All right, well, that's phase one, I guess, although it took almost all of the life of my guy. Is this, is this bugged? Is this crashing? I'm just getting a black screen. I'm pretty sure this isn't supposed to be like this. <laughs> oh my God, it is. It is breaking. What the fuck? Oh my God, it crashed a desktop. Are you kidding? Are you joking? Does this boss even have multiple phases? It must do. What a joke. Oh, how dare you. This is the greatest indignity in the history of indignities. At the end of the previous session, quick game might not have been used. Yeah, no, really? Wow. <gasps> Failure to end session with quick game may result in loss of progress. Really? You're fucking kidding me. Astonishing. So am I going to have to do that fight again or do I gonna, am I going to have to look up what that cutscene was on YouTube? Take bets now. Oh, it looks like I have to do the fight again. Oh, well. Ugh. Oh, well. It better not crash every time. If it turns out that I have some kind of like fundamentally bugged game. All right, focus time again. D 
definitely looks like interrupting the attacks is the way to go. Alright, well I got through it a lot I got through phase one a lot more easily this time. <gasps> oh my god, it crashed again! Is it gonna crash every time I do that? You've got to be kidding me. Oh my god, if I've sunk 140 hours into a save of a game and it <laughs> Hmm <laughs> Apparently over a week ago a lot of people were having this problem. But apparently Using Steam to verify file integrity solves it. Ooh. Hmm. I'm going to be grumpy about this one. Uh, God, how do I do that? Properties, local files, verify integrity of game files. And then we have to wait a while. Maybe I should just end this stream now. Hmm. I really, I wanted to beat this boss on stream. It didn't seem like I was having a difficult time with phase one, considering I made it through taking like two hits the last time. Ooh. Oh, shakes fist. Because I just know that if I if I like stop streaming now and start up a new stream tomorrow, then uh, then suddenly I will be completely failing constantly. Like my brain's in my brain's in excellent swordsman mode. You know, I can see all the angles. I can I can see the the entire fight play out in my mind's eye, etc. etc. Tropes, cliches. Thirty three percent complete. Okay, I am gonna. You know, this is a good opportunity for a bathroom break. I'll be right back. How do you leave a bug like that in your game? Like one of the like big major boss fights that is like the one everybody is putting on uh, posters and things. You know, literally the poster character for the game. Literally, you know, the little like statuette you get for the collector's edition is of this character. And this is her boss fight. And that boss fight was left bugged after the patch and they just didn't mention it to anyone. <laughs> they just rely on people to Google, hey, your files might have become bugged. And it's apparently caused by the update. Game booting, apparently. Time to kick Melania in the butt with a giant sword by myself while talking occasionally. Unless this is going to crash again, in which case I just did all of this for nothing. All right, audio on, game present, me. Probably lost all of my muscle memory from 20 minutes ago when I was successfully fighting this boss pretty easily. Time to see what happens. And then I'm going to go play board games because those can't betray you in quite the same way. Board games, they can be buggy, but they are incapable of crashing when you beat a boss uh, in the first phase. Maybe I'll even actually get to see what the cutscene is this time. Right. Let's buff the sword. Drink the juice. Remove the juice from here so that I don't have to worry about it. Go through the mist. Slam that summon my buddy button. Knock back a drink, and then we're ready to fight. Oh, I'm not wearing my headphones. No wonder I can't hear anything. Right, time to try and take this fight properly. So the trick is to just chain uh, uh oh, keep out the way of that one. That's a, that's a, no, that's okay. Chaining interrupts seems to be the way to go. And getting out of the way of that giant many hit insta kill attack. Which is that one. So that's the one we got to keep out of the way of. It's a shame that my minion got hit by it, though, because that's a lot of hit points lost.
It's interesting that the recovery animation can actually be cancelled out. Alright. I'm probably going to have a hard time with phase 2 without a minion. Incredibly frustrating that this crashed after I successfully got through the first phase with my minion with most of its health intact and barely using any health potions, but oh well. Oh hey, is that a face? That's definitely a face. It's time to face the music, it's time to face facts. That's a face only a mother could love. Wait. Hmm, concerning. Stylish. I think this might be the nakedest a FromSoft boss has ever been. Oh, a flying boss. I don't like flying bosses. The lotus explodes. Good to know. I will avoid touching it. I might need to go farm up rune arcs at this at this rate. I had 18 of them and I've used most of them in like the last day. Time to try again. Excuse me. The thing is, if me and my minion buddy can keep landing the heavy hits, we can get away with constantly staggering her out of her own an animations, which means that she can't land the, the big combos. Or heal herself very much. Oh shit, that's a big one. That's gonna kill me. Basically, if you just avoid that and the grab, I think you're okay. Time for destruction butthole, suffering ahead, dung ahead bird, be wary of healing, stay calm. All very sensible uh, advice. I'm just so salty that it crashed <laughs> after the best imaginable uh, round one. Like, the best possible I could hope for.
Wow, okay. My minion takes a tiny fraction I do from those grabs. That grab killed me in one hit. We're doing so much worse. Ugh. I promise I was doing better before. I'll probably give this a couple more tries and then give it up for tonight. Stop wasting these, to be honest. Huh, is she staggering less than before? Okay, well that's the first time I've managed to survive that one. Health regen is something else. Hey, Morak. Always nice to see you. Oh, but we you can't hear me, of course.
Okay, I think I'm going to give this one or two more tries. <laughs> Oops, well, that was a waste of mana. I don't even have my wand equipped. Why did I switch? Shameful. I believe I made it through phase one with pretty much all of my health health flasks intact and most most of my minions health bar, and then it crashed. That's more like it. Not perfect, but a damn fine step forwards. And that's about to explode. Is she immune to damage right now? Oh, she's healing on hits still. A successful stagger might really be my only chance here. enough window for me to heal. <sighs> I mean, yeah. Oh, wait, hang on. You can't even hear me, so why am I talking? <laughs> well, um, I definitely think it's one of, the, one of the loveliest bosses in terms of visual design. I love the giant blooms, but... A boss who heals from wailing on you and can kill you in one hit is just... It's, uh, it's something. It sure is something. Getting us stuck in a corner seemed to work pretty good, actually. This is going to be another total failure. 
you could just siphon all of the damage you do back up with one combo chain. Like, say, this one. Maybe I should try and fight a one-on-one -on -one and summon my minion for the second phase, but there isn't a safe window in which to do that, really. I'm just gonna die. I'm just gonna let her kill me. Clearly putting on pants was my mistake. I was doing so much better before I put the pants on. I think, unless I die instantaneously, I will make this my last try today. Because I'm kind of soured on the whole thing after everything that happened. Okay, sorcery is not really any better.
This might be bullshit. I'm starting to think this might be bullshit. I love that I basically schooled this boss on my first two attempts and then the, it crashed, or my first four of <laughs> I died instantaneously on the first two attempts, and once I knew to look what to look out for, I made it to the second phase easily, twice in a row, and then it crashed both times, and now that I've fixed the crash, every single time, I'm seriously struggling. I think I might be tilted. Okay, I'm going to have to stop now or I'm going to start to get frustrated and that's not going to be fun for anyone. I'm only going to get worse at this fight at this point. So I hope you'll join me again for more of this terrible game that I hate. Um, I may or may not stream beating this boss. I'll try and record it regardless because it sucks and I hate it. Uh, but that's going to be all from me for today. Thank you for watching. Anyone who's watched this, thank you to my Patreon patrons. Check me out on my various internet places, all of which will be in the description of this on YouTube. So thanks very much and bye.